Now, you were a late vocation. I'm going to get in. I know people want to want to hear about the controversy and what's been going on with you over the last couple of weeks. You yeah. know, that's the that's the red meat. But I also want people to know you as a person. You are a late sure. vocation. Yeah. Uh, so tell us, you know, who you are and, and how you came to be a priest. Yeah. Uh, so I have parents that are very, very faithful. Uh, they're 90 and 88. They live in the rectory with me. And my dad still is able to go over to daily mass. Glory be to God. Uh, there was never a time when they didn't impart to us, the, the children, the faith. They sacrificed so that we could go to Catholic school. It was genuinely Catholic back then, by the way. The nuns, were, I, I made a joke when it says, the nuns were, um, the, the ones in Toledo were, were just, uh, every characterization you've ever seen of, of nuns that, like, you know, the, the, the things across the hands, it, 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 terrifying. Uh, but then there were these nuns up in up in northern Michigan where my mother was from, and, and we called them mother, not sister. And I think that genuinely made a difference in their outlook towards uh-huh. the children. And so I had mother, I hope to meet him one day in heaven. I'm sure they're there. I don't know about myself, but uh, mother Matthias in third grade, mother Michaela in fourth grade. And, and that made all their love, their love of God and their love of us inspired the, the, the faith in me. And that's what people do when they're faithful. They inspire other people to be faithful. So, uh, so then I grew up, I, I grew up college um, is when I first started teaching like CCD when I was in grad school. Uh, get the MBA. I was, I was teaching confirmation class there in Ann Arbor. And when I was in law school, I was teaching confirmation class there too. And, and then as a lawyer, also teaching uh, a conference. So, so I was always close to going to retreats here and there. And uh, th- this was, not, but this was not my plan at all. Uh, I really wanted 13 kids. I wanted a baker's dozen. I, it might sound like a lot. Maybe if I, maybe after one, I would have changed my mind. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, so, so I was just, all my life that was focusing on, well, how can I somehow prepare, build for this, this eventuality, which, which I never came. It was at a point where life was good, but for some reason, I mean, I was, I had every car I ever wanted. I'd buy it sight unseen. This is what I want. I'd go on incredible vacations and, and, and somehow, I, so I started writing, running the Adoration Chapel. Here you go. This is how it all happened. I started running the Adoration Chapel. A dear friend of mine, her husband got injured in an industrial accident. And um, so myself and a friend of mine, Joe Roll, who's now Father John Hughes, uh, took over. And so what that meant is uh, three, at least three hours a week, I was in the Adoration Chapel. Do, do you want to hear this story? I, mean, it's, I it's want to hear it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, so Jan asked, told me, she's, Joe was the holy one, by the way. He would sit in back. He's flipping those ribbons in the bravery. And I, I used to say better him than me. <laughs> and uh, but he so she said there's an ordination in Marquette you should go to, and I said no that's not going to do that because it meant after working sixty some plus hours a week as a lawyer Saturday morning I would uh, get up in sweatpants and go do all the domestic chores uh, mow the lawn uh, and and then at, then at six p.m. Saturday was when I when I said okay now starts the Lord's day because I I wanted to keep my twenty four hours and you know when you have lives in your hand on. Monday morning, you, you kind of sort of have to look at the file Sunday night, but I wanted, I didn't want to cheat our Lord. So Saturday at 6 p.m. to Sunday at 6 p.m., those were his 24 hours. So they kept harassing me to go. And finally I said, well, okay. She said, she said, everybody should go to an ordination at least once in their life. And, and I, I, oh no, I had no, you know, as a lawyer, you normally have a response. No, I didn't have one. So well, I'm not going to go, but Joe has to drive. I'll go if Joe drives. Well, sure enough, there he was 6 a.m. Saturday. We drove all the way up there. And then this, the ordination takes place. So you've certainly been to one. You know what they look like. And uh, so I sat in the last poss- occupied pew because that's where I always sat. I used to, I used to sit in the, the usher's chairs in the back, and they got fed up with me taking their spots. They said, well, if you're going to sit there, you're going to be an usher. <laughs> okay. That's how it all started, too. So anyway, uh, you know, in the, in the, there comes a point in the ordination where the man lies flat on the ground yes. as there's a litany of saints. I, the only, you know, you see the picture, and you just you don't know the or the litany of saints is going on. Right. So we laid down and thought, that's just like it is in the pictures. And and then there comes a point, then that's over. Then he has to go up and he has to kneel before the bishop and, and he does, you know, laying on the hands, which I didn't know at the time, but it's like, I think I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, but it's semichet. They've been doing it since Moses' day when God said, hey, you need 70 helpers. That's how you pass on authority. It's 3,400 years old. It's not something the Catholic Church has just made up. Right. It's 3,400 years old. But here's what I didn't know. Is that after that gets over, then one by one, all the priests that are there and the, the, the Ordinati's friends, one by one, they come up and they lay hands 
right. on his head and play silently. They started in with that Teze chant called Beni Santi Spiritus, Come Holy Spirit. And, and then, I, so it builds to like crescendos and then the trumpets were coming in. And, and the only thing I can say, because again, if I had known, I would never have shown up for this. There's no words I can describe, but having had mystical experiences, you'd understand this. That what happened is like, I can only imagine it was like a Pentecost. Because I'm just sitting there minding my own business, but deeply moved by what's going on. All of a sudden, it was like a great weight kind of came down upon me and heat. Uh, and then I heard a voice of divine love. And it said, you're supposed to be up there. That's it. That's all I said. But it wasn't like, you loser, <laughs> giving you everything you ever wanted, and you're not serving me. It wasn't, like, if, if you hear the voice of divine love, it, it, so I did the math once, and I was on the planet for 1 billion, with a B, 300 million seconds at this point in my life. And what I just described to you is, is maybe 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. And it changed my life. Because uh, I knew in that 10 seconds, my life, I had no, I, I didn't even know what a director of vocations was, but I knew that uh, my life as I knew it was over and, and not, well, the rest is history. Uh, so, yeah, I, I knew, I started crying for all these people, all my friends that were there, this group of holy people, I didn't count myself among them. They were probably thinking, oh, uh, he just got a vocation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, some of them claim that they knew it all along, mm. but <laughs> yeah. That ultimately then it led to a whole bunch of another series of events and, and mystical experiences. Thank God, because not because I'm holy. That's what it would have taken for me to. My family thought I was crazy. They they kept trying to discourage me. They'd say, uh, "God has called you to be a lawyer," and I know that to be true. I knew ten minutes into my first law school class, I was the only one that seemed to like it. Uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> I I loved it. Uh, so um, so they thought, "No, you, you're just going off on some crazy tangent." But they weren't with me, you know, when I was at 2 a.m. down in the Adoration Chapel in the, in the blizzard. There's great grace that comes at 2 a.m. in <laughs> Adoration Chapel that you don't even know it. Yeah. So I highly recommend Adoration for anybody. Listen, if you're not doing a Holy Hour of Adoration a week, um, yeah, you spend time with the Eucharist. 